It's the Introvert Dating Success Podcast, the show for introverted men that's all about learning how to attract beautiful women and still get your precious alone time. And now, here's your host, dating coach and fellow introvert, Harry Wilmington. Hey guys, welcome to the Introvert Dating Success Show, courtesy of introvertdatingsuccess.com. I'm your host as always, Harry Wilmington. This is the show where you go to learn how to date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. I want to thank all you guys for joining me today. And on today's show, we're going to be doing what we always do, which is answering your dating questions. So if you have any questions you want to ask me in the chat, leave them there, and I will be happy to answer them live on today's show. In addition to that, we're going to be talking about uh, the main topic, which is 15 ways to date slower to attract her faster. And I wanted to talk about this because as guys, we get attracted to a girl when we see her, we see how pretty she is. We have a couple of good conversations and we're ready to rush in and call her our girlfriend. But you can't do that because as most of you have probably learned by now, when you do that, they get scared and they go away. But why do you need to date slower? And then in what ways can you be moving at a pace slightly slower than her so that way she actually is able to build up that attraction and connection with you? Well, I've come up with 15 different ways for you to do that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. First off, as I always say, this show is about you guys. So if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. Also, I wanted to make an announcement. So I realized that on September 1st, I will have now been podcasting in some capacity for 10 years. And the first show that I did was a show called Stop Losing Women, which is a more generalized advice show. But I did a ton of shows, lots of great interviews, and plenty of guys' lives were changed by the information in that show. And so to celebrate the 10 years I've been doing this, on September 1st, I'll be putting out a new ebook called, wait for it, Stop Losing Women. So it's Stop Losing Women, the ultimate guide to dating the woman of your dreams. And this is going to be a pay uh, a book that is chock full of rock solid advice for you guys on the ins and outs of how you should be thinking about things, how you should be acting, certain behaviors that you should be doing and things that you need to stop doing if you want to get women. So as of now, the book's at like 270 something pages. So it's going to be a pretty decent read. But in addition to that, not only are you going to get the actual ebook, I'm putting out some extra special bonuses that will come with that. And I'll be doing it at a launch price that is more than reasonably priced. All right. So I'll talk about that more throughout the coming week leading up to next Friday. But yeah, next Friday, September 1st, my new book, Stop Losing Women, will be coming out. And I promise you guys, you are going to like learn a whole lot of stuff and it's going to change the way that your dating life is forever, all right? So that's coming out on September 1st. Be sure to be there for that. All right, so before we get into the main topic, I do want to address and answer some comments and questions that I got through the course of the week, in addition to answering any questions you guys may have in the comment section and in the chat, right? So let me get a quick little drink of my water here. All right, so I want to go into... So there was a comment that was left on my page this week that I wanted to, to, to answer. And there was, a, there was a question I got last week where the guy gave me like pages of dialogue. And so when you guys leave pages of comments on my channel, I have to put it into chat GPT to summarize it because I don't want to read like 14 minutes worth of stuff when I can just narrow down to like two minutes worth of stuff. So that's what I did. So for the guy that's hopefully watching this or is hearing this, don't be insulted that I had to shorten down your, your commentary with ChatGPT. Hopefully, the majority of what you said is actually in here for me to answer it correctly, all right? And yes, I got your comment that I read after this, so I'll read that as well. But anyway, so this guy left me a random comment on my page, and he says, Harry, thanks for your awesome content. I've been a dedicated listener for a year now, and I really value your dating advice. Well, thank you. He says, I've got a bit of a dating puzzle I'd love your input on. I'm a 44-year-old divorced dad with an eight-year-old son. I'm financially stable, 6'4", 205 pounds, and in great shape working at a law firm with a solid six-figure income. I've been dating a fantastic 41-year-old single mom for 1.5 months, 
and things were going smoothly until she did something perplexing. I've been applying your dating principles carefully and thoughtfully, and she seemed quite interested. She initiated visits to my place and even invited me to the movies, which I had to decline for a good reason. On Monday night, we hung out as usual. Later that night, we had a 1.5 hour phone call where she shared her concerns, past relationships, and preferences. That's like I guess it's that's a lot of time on the phone. I mean, granted, you've been dating her for almost two almost two months now. So as you go along, the calls will be a lot lo ideally longer or whatever. But that still seems like really long for a phone call. Like even women that I'm in relationships with, my phone calls don't typically last longer than like 20 or 30 minutes because I'm like, I want to save most of this conversation for in person. But anyway, not too bad. So he says she's unsure about dating, but still interested. Okay. So I'll say this. Anytime you've been going out with a woman for a month and a half or two months and she starts saying things like, I'm unsure about dating, what that should signal to you is that you're doing way too much. Because a woman that is heavily interested in you and if you're going at a dating pace that is reasonable, then one, she's going to be knocking down her door to try to see you more often than you're seeing her. And also she's not going to make comments like this where she says, I don't know if I feel like dating now because it, she's dating you. So she's telling you that the commentary you should be getting is, dude, you've been probably calling and talking a little too much. You've been, we've been hanging out a little too much. You've been talking a little bit too much about your feelings, talking too much about the future. And these are all things that'll make a woman, woman start to second guess if she wants to be with you because you doing these things indicates that you're farther along the dating process than she is. And that's what I'm going to talk about in today's show. But yeah, the fact that you've been dating her and now she's saying, I don't know if I want to be dating. That's not a good sign. So that, that's usually a signal that you need to be a bit more patient and start kind of like backing up a bit so she can come to you. Because as I always say, if she's chasing you, she can't be replacing you. Anyway, so he says she's unsure about dating, but still interested, only wants to introduce someone to her kids for a lifelong relationship and doesn't want to rush labels or commitment, which I tell you guys all the time. We're the ones that are thinking we got to lock this down after like two or three good dates. They're the ones that are like, but I need time. I don't want to rush. I want to make sure I, I'm able to check off all the markers I need to check off before I'm comfortable. And your job is to be like, okay, so we're still going to go on a date. We're still going to hook up. Then that's fine. So as long as you're going on dates, regularly hooking up and having a good time, guys, you're good. All right. I think the threat we feel is that if we don't add a title to what we're doing with women, then they're going to be the ones to go away from us. And you can't let a lack of a title during the dating phase scare you into trying to rush things along too quickly. Anyway, uh, he says she also mentioned wanting a man who can, quote, protect, profess, and provide, including financial help for her graduate school. Now, in the longer version, he talks about how, like, yeah, they had a conversation where she's like, she wants to go to grad school, and she ideally would be with a partner who would help pay for that. He said, I explained that I don't just give money away and I'm not open to marriage again. So it's good that you're getting these things out now because it would be worse to get into a relationship knowing she has these expectations and then trying to come along later and say, oh, by the way, I don't want to give money. And also, I'm not sure I want to do the whole marriage thing. So you got to definitely make sure that you're on the same page with her about if you if this goes well, could you potentially see you getting married to her? Now, you might be thinking right now, I don't ever want to get married. If that, is a if, that is, if that option is completely off the table, then you have to let her know that. And if she's one like, well, I kind of feel that way, but if things go well, I might possibly want to get married. You need to know that now because chances are she's trying to show, she's trying to act in the moment as though she doesn't need marriage to keep you along longer. So she has time to try to convince you into it. If you know you cannot be convinced into a long-term relationship, get out now and don't waste this woman's time. Anyway, he says, I prefer domestic partnership and proportional expense sharing based on income. She seemed to understand and find this reasonable. Again, really make sure that that's where she's at. He says, three days later, I called her to plan a Saturday get together. Initially, she agreed, but then mentioned her daughter might have a birthday party. I suggested Sunday instead, but got no response. That night, I called and she was on her way to a surprise vacation with her kids. Now, I'm not sure if I'm being ghosted or if this is related to our Monday conversation. I told her to reach out when she returns, but I'm puzzled by her lack of honesty about her trip. If she contacts me, I plan to ask her about it. Uh, are, is there any thoughts or advice? Well, so I've talked about this on the show before. 
about how the big a big mistake guys make is trying to leave conversations to her to start off. So when you said, okay, we'll just contact me when you get back. No, 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 no. You're the guy. It is your responsibility to facilitate phone calls. If you know that she's going to be gone for a week, then you just say, hey, great. I'll talk to you when you get back. That way it's still in your corner to be the one that's going to reach out to her because you leaving it in her hands. Now you got to wait. Now that you've said, hey, I'm going to wait for you to get back. Now you got to be the one to wait. And assuming that she has high interest and assuming she still wants to be with you, then she might reach out. But even women that are highly interested in you are still going to want you as the guy to be the one to facilitate conversations and to reach out to her to ask her out. Now, all this to say, the reality is we don't know. We don't know if she's lying about having to take a trip with her kids or not. It, we could say that it's kind of suspicious that that's coming up now, but it could have been a, a legit surprise. Like the kids could have come home Saturday and said, hey, we got our, our friend invited us to go to Disney for the week and we want to go. Is that cool? And she's like, oh, crap. But this guy. But sorry, the trip with the kids is going to supersede that because she's a single mom. Kids come first. You're a single dad. You should understand the kids are coming first in these situations. So I will say this, though. Kids are a very good excuse that parents can use to get out of stuff. So you don't want to call her out on that because we don't know. You don't you're not there to actually know if she's using the kids as a reason to not see you or not. All we know is this thing came up. She said she has to now go out of town. So take her out of word. Wait until she gets back and then hit her up again and ask her out for another date. At that point, if she's still giving you these excuses that are delaying you seeing her or if she's not answering at all, then you'll have a better idea of what she's really feeling and you can be out. Now, there was another uh, so there was another comment that you left. I think, she, I think you said that uh, if it helps, she's taking Ambien and that could possibly be a reason why she's being so like wishy-washy about dates. Uh, dude, I will tell you now, I don't care if a woman's going through a depression, if she's on a variety of drugs, if she has a chemical imbalance of some kind, as a whole, when women are interested in you, they will do things to make sure that they're able to see you. If that means having to be on regular medication so her mental is regular so she can be around you, it is what it is. If she has bipolar and she starts going crazy and she meets you, she's going to find some meds because she wants to keep you around, all right? So don't let, that's, this is what those guys do. Guys will be like, I need to find an excuse for her behavior. So maybe it's X, Y, and Z. And I, I stress the behavior itself ultimately does not matter. The bottom line is, if she's not doing things that indicate she wants to be with you, then she doesn't want to be with you. That's all you can go on because whether or not she's on medicine or not, the reality is it's preventing her from seeing you. And so you have to ask those questions. Is the, are the things that she's doing right now causing her to want to be around you? If they're not, then you got to look at that. And also, of no, I've said this on the show before, you don't want to date with somebody that's, that has a bunch of mental problems. Like you can feel sorry for them. You can empathize with them, but I'm going to tell you now, getting in a relationship with somebody that you already know has mental issues of some kind, it's going to be way difficult than women that are more even keel. Now, you might start dating a woman and then find out later down the line that she has some kind of issue, at which point it's, it's kind of too late because you've fallen for it and you just kind of, kind of deal with it. But also, ideally, she's been regulating that to where that's why you didn't know. But you find out within the first month, dude, you got a chance to get out before feelings really, really build. And I know, again, as guys... We tend to fall very, very fast to women, and that can cloud our judgment on whether or not we should be with this person. Or we get into hero mode, like, oh, she's going through this thing. She has this medical issue. Oh, my God, I'm going to be the guy that stays with her because I'm sure other guys haven't. And you get into superhero mode. It is not your job to save these women. I'm sorry, it's not. Like, it's their job to make sure that they're taking the regimented medicines that they need to be there to be a viable partner for somebody else. If that is not her, then she's actually doing you a favor by ghosting you. So hopefully that helps you out. All right, I got a question in the chat from uh, Unbox Views. And so I have a question in the chat here, and the question goes, are there any tips to keep a conversation going? I'm going in a, on a trip with a girl I have been dating for four months, and I'm scared the conversation can get boring. Well, for one, if you've been single for four months, ideally that means you've had enough exchanges by now to where you can kind of bounce off of other stuff you guys have talked about previously to continue conversations in that vein, all right? but Here's an interesting, uh, interesting answer to that, okay? Is that, especially if you're an introvert, we get very caught up in the idea that if we're not talking or saying enough, that the woman on her side is gonna start to see us as boring or start to think like, 
he seems so nervous around me, like maybe we shouldn't be dating or whatever. And here's the truth. I have found that sometimes it's actually better to bask in silence. And sometimes it's actually better to wait for her to come up with conversation. And sometimes the answers you give to things are going to be short and sweet. And also women typically like to talk about themselves. So it's actually more uh, apprehensive or it's better to like be the one that's going to be a listener and let them be the ones to talk. Because if you ask a good enough question, women are going to tangent for like 10 or 20 minutes just talking about something. You, like the, the joke of like, if you, like Chris Rock told us years ago, he said, uh, ask a woman how her day was. How, how was your day is a 20 minute conversation. And sure enough, all the women that I've dated across the board, they come home from work. Hey babe, how was your day? Boom. I'm now engrossed in a 20 minute conversation about the things they did at work, about who they talked to, about some beef that they had, about how they feel about their boss doing a certain thing, about what they had for lunch. Oh, also note, almost every woman that I've dated usually asks me, hey, what did you have for breakfast? Hey, what did you have for lunch? Hey, what did you eat today? And for the longest time, I was like, this is the most mundane question. Like, why is she so interested in what the freak I'm eating? But the reason that they ask is because women want to know all about you. And so that means that they're willing to come up with any kind of conversation that they can to get you to answer questions so they can know a bit more about you. So all that to say, don't be so in your head about every conversation you have having to be a world building, relationship connecting conversation. I know as introverts, we really thrive on meaningful conversation. And we think that if we ask a, a nonchalant random question that's not meaningful, it's not gonna be a deep enough conversation for us to care. Dude, the woman just wants to be asked anything because she just wants a guy that is seemingly interested in any aspect of her life. Even something like Monday, hey, you could ask her, hey, what made you choose that shoe color over like another color? She will go on a five minute tangent about how, how uh, teal is her favorite color. Now she always thinks it matches well with her eyes and her skin tone and how she used to have this other color that she wanted to wear, but then she realized it didn't really match. Like women will go on tangents for days if you let them, all right? Now, with that said, I understand it can still be hard to come up with conversations. And honestly, if I had known this was gonna be a question, I would have gone to my car because I have a book in my car that I keep in my glove compartment, right? And it's a book that's, it's called like 400 different questions to ask whatever. And it's either 400 or like thousands or something. But there are books you can get out there that are just be like question books, like X amount of questions to ask whatever. And it'll have uh, sections that range from like politics to uh, sex stuff, to personal relationships, to you know uh, family history. And you can literally on a car trip, like just open the book and say, hey, babe, okay, well, this is what we're gonna do. I want, we're gonna just each flip through. You're gonna pick a question. I'm gonna answer it. And then you're gonna answer it. And then I'll pick a question. So you have to have her open the book so you can like just kind of randomly flip through and pick a question. But then I'll pick a question and then you answer it and then I'll answer it. And that could be a three hour trip. Like I've literally done that with women where it ended up being like two and a half to three hours of interesting conversation where this book is helping me to come up with questions and I'm getting interesting answers from her that allow me to A, ask follow-up questions and also allow me to really delve into who she is and what she likes, which can then be used for later on dates and surprises and stuff like that. So all that to say, there. don't be so worried about how much conversation you have to have. Don't be afraid if at times in the car, you're not talking to each other, that is bound to happen. Like if, you, if you're in a relationship long enough, you're gonna have a long car ride where both of you are saying nothing. And ideally you've built up the relationship enough there to where you feel connected and it's comfortable. Um, but like I said, those kind of books can actually help facilitate conversations. So hopefully this helps you out. All right, I'm gonna get to another question over here that I have in my notes here. So, okay, so. This person left a comment under my, my video called my ex had sex during a break. And I said, and I said in that video, basically that let's say you guys break up. You guys don't have any intention or idea. You're going to get back together. There's probably a chance that either you or her are going to hook up with somebody else. If you decide later on that you want to try to get back with this person, you have to be aware that there's a chance that while you guys are broken up and in the process of her trying to move on, she may have hooked up with a person or two or whatever. Right. And so a lot of guys try to hold that against women. And I'm like, if you didn't know you were going to get back together, why are you holding this against her? You wouldn't want her to hold against you that you hooked up with somebody else, right? Anyway, so this guy said, uh, in reference to his breakup, we clarified that we didn't want to see anyone during our break, and yet she hooked up with someone else. 
Somebody's got to get jumped. That's easy. So I'll say this. There's a difference between a conversation of, look, I think we need some space to kind of think about things. So we're going to take this break, but we're going to come back together and say like two or three weeks and reassess this. If you had that kind of conversation, then it's more understandable why you would be upset then if in the process of doing that, she hooked up with somebody else. Okay. And I'm going to say that's perfectly justifiable, but most people don't have that conversation. Most people are like, it's over or done. And then their ego's thinking, I'll get her back. Yeah, she'll come back to me. It's no problem. And then they expect in the process of that, that she's thinking the same thing. I'm going to get back with them. And what's usually happening is the girl's like first devastated, crying a lot, bawling. Her girls are trying to get her out of the house. And then she eventually gets out of the house. She goes out and parties a little bit or whatever. And then she meets the guy and it's like, hey, maybe this will be like the guy that is my next guy. Get Maybe they hook up and she's like, oh, I thought this would block the feeling of how I felt with, about my ex. And it's not. Oh, I really need to get my ex back. So in the process of hooking up with this other person, they realize, oh, crap, I really missed my, my first person. Maybe we can work this out. But again, there was no knowledge of that prior to that happening. So that's why I say you can't punish women for doing that. But again, if you had a conversation about it's going to be just a short little break, then I understand why you'd be, be mad about that. That still said, I do not fundamentally believe in people taking breaks. Either you're going out and you're being together or you're not. And if you're not, then you're thinking that you guys need to, you know, uh, basically like hold on to somebody's ability to go out there and venture to see other people. That is not a fair thing to do with to either party. So my thing is this. Let's say you are with somebody and you're thinking you guys might get back together. Well, the reality is you could have a conversation about it, take a few days and then come back and reassess. If you're talking about taking a month off, two months off, dude, that's a breakup. It feels like a breakup. You're not in communication with the other person. And at that point, if they do some other stuff, I got news for you. You could have agreed to all the things you want to. But the reality is in those moments when she's by herself or at a party and seeing other dudes or you're at a club and seeing other women, well, somebody's going to come up to you. You're attractive. She's attractive. Hey, let's do some stuff. If, if think about you. Are you really going to be like, oh, but I'm going to break my girlfriend. And I told her I wouldn't hook up with anybody. No. Chances are you're going to be like, I mean, if I don't tell her, then it never happened. So I just, I'm just all for not being a hypocrite. That's all. It's like dudes get mad that girls that they broke up with and then try to get back with later hooked up and oh my God, it's the worst thing ever. And yet as a dude, you know, you want to do that. Like, you know, if you were broken up or you were just on a break and some hot girl to club, that was an absolute tin and checked off all your boxes. was Like, let's go back to my place for some no strings attached hookup. You wouldn't be like, oh, but my girlfriend, you'd be like my Oh, right. The girl that we're, I'm broken up with, the one that asked for the break. Yeah, I'm doing this tonight. So that's my feelings on it. But your feelings may vary. So, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, for those of you that are just joining, I want to stress again, I have a new book coming out next Friday. It's going to be the 10th year anniversary of when I did my first podcast for the show called Stop Losing Women. And so I have a book coming out called Stop Losing Women, The Ultimate Guide to Dating the Women of Your Dreams. It's a 250 plus page book. Plus, I have some really awesome extras that are going to be coming with this. I have a couple of video extras, a couple of uh, special reports that are going to really give you insights and give you an edge in the dating game. So be on the lookout for that. I'll be talking more about that in the coming week. And I'm just really proud of the book altogether. So anyway, so what to plug, plug that. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually get into the main thrust of our show, but I'm going to do that by way of answering a couple of comments first, because here's the thing. So I've talked extensively on this channel about how women need two to three months to solidify their feelings. And to a lot of guys, that seems really slow. Like guys think, wait a minute. So I've gone on two or three dates with her. We've had a great time together. I'm already starting to feel the feels. And you're telling me I got to wait another two and a half months for her to want to be in a relationship, for me to be able to express my feelings to her and tell her how much I care about her. Like, I got to wait. Like, but three months is so far away. Now, I try to express in the grand scheme of your life, if you're with a woman for 30, 40, 50 years, if you look at dating and being with somebody in that capacity of that time frame, Three months is a drop in the bucket. It is nothing. It is no time. Three months goes by like that, except when we have a high interest in somebody and our feelings get involved. And on a day to day, we're thinking, I want to be with them. What do they feel about me? How do they like me or not? And it can be very, very nerve wracking. Right. So I, I want to talk today about the importance of being able to slow down dating, because here's the thing, guys, I have found in my dating life that 
once I was able to apply things like patience and do certain actions that allowed me to not make it feel like such a rush process for the woman, that women more often than not were coming to me trying to then do actions that would progress the dating relationship or whatever we were doing at the time, leading up to when they would come to me and ask me to be in a relationship. But how does that happen? How do you get a woman to come to you and ask for the relationship instead of you doing the opposite? And it's very simple. If you're going at a pace that is slightly slower than hers, then you will find that it's going to cause her to let you know unequivocally when she's ready to move forward and take certain steps. So what I'm gonna start off with doing is I'm gonna uh, re read a couple of responses I got under videos of men that are having problems and situations because they are rushing the process. So this first one was put under my pull away test video. And this guy said, the attraction, communication, and time spent together was heavy at first. And she even said, she put me first over her family at the beginning and, and now she's trying to break the habit of doing that and trying to find the balance again. Basically, the, the third reason I said in the video about how women, the reason that part of the reason they pull away is because after they spent a good amount of time with you, they start to realize, but wait, I have family and friends. I haven't talked to her forever. I need to like take away some of the time with him to reconnect with my friends and family because they're also important to me. He says, but I don't know if I can truly handle it with my level of impatience. We had a conversation on the phone. It's literally that reason to a T, but oh man. So what's this guy saying? Well, the girl's saying for one, hey, he's saying in the beginning, she was putting me over friends and family. And this is why I tell you guys that as the guy in the relationship, it is your job to figure out the pace at which this is supposed to go so you can lead her in the right direction. And part of that is you having conversations with her about like, hey, so like we're dating, but like, are you still talking to your friends? You still hanging out with family? Like, what's that like? If she at all says, well, you know, I've been spending most of my time with you. It sounds great. It's it, admittedly, it's a stroke to the ego that she's sacrificing time with others to hang out with you. But you cannot allow her to do that because what happens is what this guy's going through where she starts saying, oh, I never see my friends and family and, and I'm always hanging out with you. And now she's going to start blaming you, even though it was her choice for not being able to see your friends and family. And so you have to be the one to regulate how much time she's spending with you, which is why I tell you guys, doing things like going on dates and not calling her all the time between dates or spacing out how much you guys see each other is actually a good thing because one, it allows her time away from you to be able to miss you, think about you. But more importantly, it also gives her time to go back to those friends and family and talk you up about what a great guy you are and how she can't wait to see you again and how she's anticipating it and wondering where you're at when you're not around her. But she's doing that with her friends and family. So she can still say, I still feel like I have a balance here because I'm seeing my friends and family while I'm talking about this guy. And then her friends and family be like, oh my God, you guys, you're always talking about that guy. Man, he's, he must be so great because you we've never heard you talk so much about a guy before. So her actually getting that time only helps to help her build you up to her. So why guys don't understand this is like, but I get it. Hey, I was, I was new at this too. There was a point in time when I was trying to take all the women's time and I had to find out the hard way that, you know what, doing that, it builds resentment. And most women in, a, in an attempt to try to be friendly and not combative, aren't going to fight you if you're asking them for time. So you have to be the one to be like, Hey, if she's not seeing me, I can't let it be a blow to my ego. I know she likes me, but she's got a life outside of me. I have to let her do that. But this goes also back to, when you're doing that, you're not trying to rush in and take all of her time. So in effect, you're moving slow enough to where she can still see her friends and family, but she's also thinking, man, but I want more of his time. And the only way she's gonna be able to get it is if she comes to you and starts suggesting times to see you outside of the current time that you guys are seeing each other. And that's what you want, because when a woman's coming to you and telling you she wants to see more of your time, what she's not doing is pushing you away or telling you, but I see you too much. And that's the thing that you have to learn how to balance, guy. That's the first guy. Then the second guy, I left a comment under another video. Um, and he says, uh, we're both 24 years old. I've dated this girl for five or six months. We instantly kicked it off from the first date and would spend time together a few weeks, uh, a few days a week at the minimum, always texting and calling and hooking up. So just the fact that he said, we spent a few days together. That's it's multiple in a row. And we're always texting. We're always calling. This is a guy 
that is giving too much of himself too soon. And in the process, it's going to feel to a woman like he's trying to rush the process to get her to feel things for him, right? Well, let's see if that happens. So he says, even though I was progressing faster, well, he should say, because I was progressing faster. But he says, even though I was progressing faster, she did, she did, she did want to take it slow in terms of actually being official. But around the fourth mark, I asked her out officially. Now, what do I tell you guys on the show? If you date a girl for two or three months, you're doing all the right stuff, she's going to come to you. Now, that's that's on average. There are women that might take an additional four or five months. But if that's happening, what I found is usually it's because in the course of the first two to three months, the guy is always there, always talking, always communicating, always texting. And that doesn't give women enough time to miss you and also doesn't give her enough time to anticipate or be anxious about the idea of you two being a couple and, it, and her having it be her idea. Because you guys being in a relationship, you already know you want to do it. It needs to be her idea also that she's actually ready to make that move because women have more stuff to look out for than guys do. So if she's, if she's not coming to you yet, your job is not to be like, it's been four months. I can't wait anymore. I'm going to rush in. what I tell you? If you, she's saying yes to dates and you're getting regular hookups, you're good. You're not going anywhere. But if you're doing it too much, then she could be delaying asking you out because in part, you're there so much, she doesn't get a chance to think about what it would be like without you being there. And that's really an incentive enough for a woman to want to come up to you and say, okay, dude, what are we? You're not giving her the space to have the dude, what are we conversation. So then he said, I did say, I love you. <sighs> He did say, I love you at the time, but she didn't say it back. Why do you think that is? Because at the time that you said it, she was not fully there yet in terms of her feelings. Because again, she feels as though you're rushing this process for her. And at that point, she didn't say it back at that point, which was fine because I know people take it slow. And the woman should always be the one to say, I love you first. Don't fall for the stuff that the media says or that these movies say where like the guy's like in a moment of uh, with his crush. And then he's like, I just want you to know that I really love you. And then she turns to the camera. <gasps> you, you, you love me. Oh, my God. I, I had no feelings like that at all for you. But now that you said it, I it, it doesn't work like that. The reality is you saying I love you more often than not is going to be too soon. And it's going to scare her off. Anyway. He said, at that point, we were already acting like boyfriend and girlfriend. Well, no, you were doing things that made it feel as though you guys in a relationship, but she still wasn't there yet. And she was going along with it because she didn't want to hurt your feelings. And also because admittedly, the media is lied to women too. They see these things happening and think, I should want a guy to do these things or say these things or have these grandeur gestures of love. And yet they always feel weird because it's like, but I, it's, it's not, it doesn't quite feel right. Like the media is saying, this is what should work on me, but it doesn't feel right. And all that matters is, are the things you're doing making a woman feel like you're going at the right pace and direction for getting her into a relationship? In this case, he was not. So then he says, then one month later, she told me she just doesn't feel that spark. Something is missing. And she sees me as more of a friend. This was tough. And well, yeah, this was tough to hear because our families and friends all knew we were dating. Even the week before she broke up with me, we went on really fun dates. We were making plans to see her sister. She was already sending pictures of me to her mom, so it completely blindsided me because it seemed like she was getting attached. Well, even the fact that you said that uh, you were making plans to see her sister, dude, you weren't in a relationship. So until the boyfriend and girlfriend mark gets crossed, you should not be really seeing each other's friends and family. Like, unless she happens to live with a family member or happens to live with some friends, and then by default, you go to pick her up, they're there, you got to see them. But on the whole, the dating phase is meant to be just you two to see if you guys can really get along, to see if you guys have a, a bond and a connection. And you're not supposed to be trying to bring other people into this space when you're getting to know somebody. Because as I've said before, doing that makes it feel too real, too fast, too soon. And even if a woman seems to be going along with it, this is why I say again, you have to be the one to lead in how this relationship is building because women will do things that they're unaware of are going to actually cause them to start to lose interest, which is why I do a show like this. So you can have knowledge about, hey, a woman might suggest you 
uh, meet up with her sister, but you got to know that potentially doing that before you're the boyfriend, it's probably going to turn her off. And she's not going to see that, but all, the, all that's going to happen is it's, you're going to meet the sister, and then a week later, I'm just not feeling, but I don't know how this happened. And it's because you did not understand relationship dynamics and how women build attraction, and you thought you could just do anything you wanted to do, and you're finding out now that you can't. So this is why I have a show so you can learn these things and not make these mistakes because women are not going to, women don't have to know them. Like women are the ones that are the receivers of the things that we're doing to try to attract them. They do not have to know the ins and outs of what things are going to turn them off or whatnot, but you have to know this anyway. So he says, okay, uh, I really thought she could be the one because we both found each other attractive, have successful careers already and similar backgrounds, it's tough. Well, this is why I try to stress too, guys, that like just because you guys have things that are similar to each other does not a relationship make. So you guys have successful careers. You guys have similar careers. You guys have similar backgrounds. None of these things matter. All that matters is, are the things that you're doing causing her to feel attraction? Your job and where you came from might be small factors in how she feels about you. But if you guys had the same background, but you were like, yelling at her or being abusive, then she probably wouldn't be attracted to you. So I stress that to say, none of those things actually matter. But what does matter is when you are dating her, do you know the process of dating, or the process of attraction that are gonna actually cause her to feel the things that she needs to feel for you to come to the decision of her own accord that she wants to date you? And that's what you have to do. And that's why I got a book coming out on the first, because you're going to learn a lot of things in this book that talk about the ins and outs of the things that you need to make a woman feel so you can stop losing her. And this is like based on years of trial and error mistakes that I made. And when I did my podcast, I talked about it a lot. But yeah, if you want to really stop losing women, you got to start with knowing the fundamentals of what attracts and what doesn't, which I talk about extensively in this book. But even if it's, hey, I tell you guys all the time, I love for you guys to buy my stuff. But even if it's not me, really start putting to yourself, treating women as though they're a subject to be studied and learn the ins and outs of what makes them function and attracts them so you can do a better job at keeping them around. Now, with that said, obviously with today's show, um, I want to go into examples of things that you can do as the guy to start moving at a slower pace than the woman. Because I'm telling you guys, nothing is more satisfying than you're just taking your time you're calling a girl up to ask for dates, but not texting her any more than that. And by that second or third date, as you're waiting the next four to five days to contact her, she hits you up on day two. Hey, so I was thinking about you today and I just, I want to know if maybe you wanted to do like a, like a beach day sometime this, this week. And you didn't plan to talk to her for four days, but now she's reaching out to you. Why is that? Because you were patient. And so as you'll find that if you stop rushing in and you just, learn to be more patient and enjoy the process and let things simmer, then you're going to find that the results that you get with women are going to be astronomical. Like you're going to have women that are trying to ask you out on dates and try to pay for you to do things and try to hook up with you faster because you're slowing the pace down. So I'm going to just give you guys a few examples of that. Uh, before I get into that, I want to make sure we have some uh, questions in the chat here. And so let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick pivot. I'm gonna answer this quick question in the chat and then we'll get to the main part of the show, right? So I know you guys are waiting. So this guy asked a question in the chat. He said, for introverts dating multiple women prior to exclusivity, how much time should you give each woman, i.e. dates a week, while still pursuing your other life goals? It takes time for women to really consider you their boyfriend. Is it okay to go weeks between dates? I mean, I have, and I've been able to build up attraction with women like that. Um, so here's the thing. So as an introvert, you're going to find that it, it's very tempting to be like, I'm dating like seven women. Seven women is seven days of energy or seven people you had to share energy with, time, effort, energy, resources, and money. So you can do that. But I typically, if I was, when I was, uh, if I'm ever dating like a bunch of women at the most, it's like two or three at a time. Like I can juggle two or three at a time. It's just enough to not break my bank. And I still have time to do other things like chase goals, do podcasts, et cetera. Um, but it's still enough time to be able to see, okay, but I'm, I'm definitely deciding between a variety of women so I can hopefully narrow down to the one that I want. And so during that time, you're going to find, for one, most of these women, they're not just dating you to start with. Like they go on a date with you and have a great time. And then I know our egos like to think that we're, we're, our date is so good, 
she wouldn't dare try to go back on the dating app or go to a party and meet somebody else to date them. And the reality is they are like, so that's going to take away part of your time because she's not going to always be as readily available to start. And what, what you'll find is though, as you're dating more and more that the women will start lessening the other dudes that they're talking to, and they're going to want to see you more. And that's great. But you are still in control of how the dating process is going to go. And so ideally, each person you're dating is going to get at least one date a week. So you might go out with one girl on like a Monday, the next one on like a Thursday, the next one on a Sunday, and then you mix it up and whatever. But ideally, you're doing at least one date per week. Or if you can stress it, if it's too stressful for you, you can do like one date per week and a half for each woman. All right. But yeah, ultimately you're the one that's in charge and you'll find too. And this goes back to like when you're dating slower, I have found that as you're, when you're dating slower, right. Women will start to wonder why it is that you're not so hung up on them to where you're not texting them all the time. You're not calling them all the time. You're not asking them to hang out all the time. And that thought is going to make her realize and or feel that she might have some competition. She might, she won't know for sure, but the fact that you're so patient when most of the guys she's trying to date are not will make her think he must be really confident because he ain't, he ain't blowing up my phone. He ain't trying to ask me out for five days out the week. Like interesting. And what that'll also make her do is it'll make her appreciate. It'll make her anticipate and then appreciate the time that she does get to spend with you and appreciating that time could mean her doing things with you physically a lot faster than she would have were you not being that patient. So ultimately, you can't think you're going to get punished. The worst thing that will happen is if a woman's like, well, you're only seeing me every, every week and a half, blah, 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 then that just lets you know that she's not patient and that she wants what she wants right now. And if that works for you, great. And if not, you're still as the guy in control of this dating process. You can say, hey, I understand. I'm not always as readily available. Best of luck to you. Because you cannot let how she's reacting to that affect the way that you're going to date. So hopefully that helps you out. So anyway, let's go ahead and get to it, guys. Let's get into the 15 ways to be slower than her when you're dating. So that way you can actually cause her to be more attracted to you in a quicker amount of time. So first one, say it all the time, call and text less. Dudes, you're going on dates, having a good time. It is not your job to try to build rapport or build a relationship with a girl by texting her and calling her throughout the course of the week. What we want to see is we want to see her being the one to initiate conversations with you. And most guys don't experience that because they're so busy thinking they got to be the ones to initiate that they don't take a minute to just stop and pause and say, hey, I deserve to be caught and I'm already going to be texting her or calling her when I ask her out for dates. If she wants more conversation than that, she's got two thumbs. She can text me. She can pick up the phone and call. And I just, in my personal dating life, I have found that when I lowered the amount of texting calls that I was doing, the results were usually A, women hitting me up to try to talk to me more, or B, women saying, hey, so I, I was wondering, like, are you just not a texter person? Like, I, I just, I like to really text and stuff like that. And I just, and, but, but when she's complaining, what she's actually doing is saying, I want to hear from you more because I like you. So all it does is make them give away that they like you a lot more. And so that's why if you're texting less, you're going to find that a good read for that is when you do that, she's going to be trying to reach out to you a bit more, which is what we want. Because if she's reaching out to you, she can't be complaining that you're reaching out too much. Okay. So, and I know this might be a new concept to some of you about waiting between dates to text a woman, not calling her, all this other stuff. Guys, I say it all the time. She's going to know that you like her when you hit her up to ask for that next date. OK, but we need we need to also have some barometers in place for you to be able to recognize when she's starting to like you more. Not texting or calling so much is a great way for her to get for you to get that read. All right. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is delay your responses when she initiates text. So you're waiting between four or five days to hit her up for that next date. Right. And she hits you up on day number two. Hey, handsome or hey, cutie. How you doing today? Now. And I think sometimes guys mix this up with the message that I say, because I say, I say, don't initiate text between those four days. But if she initiates a text, you do want to respond. But for that first text she sends you, you want to wait. You want to delay it by at least 30 minutes to an hour. So she'll hit you up. Hey, cutie, blah, 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 blah. Do something else. Go on the computer, look up a video, talk to your buddies, but wait a minimum of 30 minutes. When I started practicing this, I waited a minimum of 20 minutes, but give her the time to not hear from you. 
and on that first text, right? So you wait about 30 minutes to an hour, hit her up. Oh, hey, so-and-so, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. And then there, if you want to have some small banter, you can, or you can go into, hey, I was thinking about you, had a great time last night. We should do this again next Thursday. Let me know if you're free, right? But the point is, when you delay that first response, right, that's going to be 20 to 30 minutes where she's going to be in her head wondering if you're going to respond to her. She's going to wonder if maybe she shouldn't have texted and this was a bad day. Is she looking too desperate? Are you now not going to ever talk to her? And then you respond. And she's like, oh, he's responding. But that 20 to 30 minutes is crucial because most guys she's dating, as soon as she texts them, oh, blah, blah, blah. and believe it or not, women don't want to envision you sitting next to your phone, anticipating, waiting for her to hit, hit you up. Like that is a very feminine image that she's going to have in her head about you sitting next to the phone, waiting for her to hit you up. We don't want that. But if you, she hits you up and you wait 20, 30 minutes, now you look like a guy that's busy. Now it's going to be more like, oh my God, he, he didn't respond for like an hour. He must've been so busy and he took time out of his day to respond to me. Oh my God, I feel so special. So again, if you're responding slower, you're going to get better reactions. Okay. Now, after that first text, you want to kind of dibble and dabble between responding every like two minutes to every five or 10 minutes, whatever. And then at some point, stop the conversation. Like, don't say I'm stopping the conversation, but she'll send back a thing like, oh, you're so silly. And then leave it be. And then don't reach out to her again until it's time to ask for a date or until she hits you up again, you know? But yeah, we want to really work on part of this exercise also is that way you can get the idea in your head that if you delay responding back to a woman, most of them are going to be fine. And honestly, the ones that get on you about why didn't you respond back right away, you don't want to date them. I had a girl I dated years ago who, like, she would hit me up and I would wait and I would respond back to her and then she would just text, 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 and I got annoyed. So at some point I'd be like, okay, great, blah, 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 whatever. And then she'd send a text and I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Two minutes later, hello, are you still there? Are you cheating on me with somebody? What's going on? So even then, delaying my response was actually good because it allowed me to suss out that she does not have her head on straight and I need to get out of here, which I did. So anyway, the third way to move slower than her is to keep those first few dates short. Because a lot of men make the mistake of you get on a, a date with a girl and you're thinking, okay, it's going to last like 45, 50 minutes. And then the conversation's going good. She's smelling good. She's looking good. You're thinking there's a chance we could hook up. And now you're like, well, I know I should probably only keep it for like an hour, but I'm going to try to extend this date to like five or six hours. And you guys will do that and think, oh, we had such a great date. This first date, we talked about all this stuff and had a good time. And then you're surprised when you try to ask for a second date and she's suddenly, I'm busy or I'm not feeling it. And you're like, what's going on? And the problem is this. You spent too much time with her on that first date. Spending too much time with a woman makes her feel like you're already in a relationship. And if she's not there yet, then all it's going to do is make her second guess and start double checking her emotions about how she really felt about you. And did she warrant, did it actually warrant spending that much time with you? How did she enjoy all that time? And it's going to make her second guess it. And so you, and it's not that that's, that's not always the case, but I give you guys advice on probability. You have a better chance of going out with a date, going out on a date with a girl for the first time and keeping it to an hour, 90 minutes tops, and then cutting it short at the height of enjoyment and then being able to get a date with her later because she's anticipating spending more time with you than you do spending that first date five, six, seven hours because it's going to be overexposure. It's not going to allow her to anticipate seeing you because she already knows what it's like seeing you because she spent eight hours with you and you're going to be out. All right. Versus if you spend a little bit amount of time with her, then you'll find on the second date. Now she's the one that's trying to extend it because now she's starting to build more comfort with you. And it's her decision to stretch it out versus you being like, well, I'm paying for the date. And so I'm going to take her out and, and I'm not going to let her go. I'm going to keep talking at this table. I'm going to make suggest five other places to go. And you're ruining it for her in the process. All right. So let's not do that. The fourth way to move slower than her is when you're talking to her in conversations, right? These things that have a bigger story, but do not reveal it all, all right? You got to understand, guys, women love stories, but more importantly, they love having to be entrenched in a journey to whereby they don't quite know the ending and they want to get there eventually, but they want to hear the peaks and valleys of the journey. And you trying to do all this on date one is not helping you. So for example, right, let's say you guys are on a date, you guys are talking about 
like you guys like to vacation, right? And you say something like, oh man, yeah, you know what? This, like for me, I went, uh, oh man, this is great. Like, you know, I actually uh, went to Australia and I had a good time in Australia. Oh, and she'll be like, oh, really? like, like, what was it like? It's like, oh, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was a lot. It was a fun time. I'll, I'll go into detail more later because there was some really like amazing stuff that happened at, at like this one place I went to. Oh my God. Like, but that'll be for another time. So anyway, and then I ask her something about herself. But what have I done? I've now teased that I went to a country and some major stuff happened and I didn't finish the story. So now she has to go home and think, man, I had a great time with that guy. And I want to know the rest of that Australia story. So the only way she gets to know the story is if we go out a couple more times. And I might, it might take a few more dates before I go into the full story, you know? So, oh, nothing happened, by the way. I, I ate a kangaroo. I ate a uh, kangaroo. It was amazing. I had kangaroos, uh, kangaroo burger. And then I went to the top of this, uh, the top, the tallest building in, in Australia. And I went to this buffet and they had kangaroo there also, but I lost my taste. So I, I paid like 50 bucks to go to a buffet and couldn't taste anything. That's the, that's, that's a fascinating story, but that's one again, I could tease that and then tell it later. So think about really good stories based on what's actually happened to you in your life. And then figure out a way that you can piecemeal those stories bit by bit. So you're basically spoon feeding her stories but in order for her to get the full stories, she has to be with you throughout the course of the dating process, all right? And so that's a cheap way that you can go about moving things a bit slower because women want stories from you. But I think the mistake guys make is we hear women want to know about us and we want to tell them all the things on the first or second date. Don't do that. Piece it out, man. Like, paste that story out to where it's an enjoyable journey and it leaves her anticipating hearing more of it later on, all right? The fifth way to show her, the uh, fifth way to move slower than her is to, oh, spoon feed her personal details about your life. So yeah, it's like you can mention on a date, like, hey, you know, uh, me, my, uh, my, my parents back in the day, they got divorced. Oh, what, what happened? Uh, I don't want to get into it now. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later once we get to know each other more. But anyway, blah, 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 blah. Then the next date, yeah, my, 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 my uh, mom cheated on my dad, so they broke up. Oh my God, how'd that happen? You know what? I'll talk about it later. And the next day, yes, yeah, so my mom, you know, she was like, she met this guy at work and they got along. And so, so, so it's like, she's getting bits of this story each time she's on a date with you. But again, you're giving it in a style that really makes women anticipate hearing the next chapter of the story, right? Continuing on. The sixth way to move slower than her in the beginning is to only see her once a week. Like I know... You met her at a party. She smelled good. She looked good. You had a makeout session at the party. You actually got her on a date. And you're thinking, man, based on these two times that I met her, we already got chemistry. And I can already feel this feeling like a relationship. Don't do that. We, there, um, guys, too many of you guys are making the mistake of thinking that whatever you're doing with this girl feels like a relationship. No. It feels like the dating process. And in your head, you have lust. And it's making you want to spend more and more time with her to eventually get a hookup. Be Patient. In the beginning, only ask for one day a week. You're only asking for one day of her time, all right? Because again, we want her to be the one to start thinking and feeling, man, this guy's so great. I think I want to see him more than once a week. How's that going to happen? I guess I got to go to him and express that I want that to happen. And if she's coming towards you doing that, then what she's not doing is rejecting you when you asked her out for the third day in a row. And she's like, I got family, I got friends. This guy wants to see me all the time. Why is he so obsessed with me already? Like, oh my God. So yeah, only ask her out once a week. And you're going to find, I'm telling you guys, if you ask her out just once a week, inevitably what's going to happen is she's going to come to you and try to get you to agree to see her some other time of the week. Like, hey, I know we have a date on Thursday again this week, but like, you want to come over Tuesday for dinner? Oh, you get to go over for a hookup that you didn't anticipate because you were patient, because you were showing that you had the ability to have a good time with her, but not be so obsessed that you're going to try to galvanize her time without her being there yet, all right? Once she gets there, guys, I'm telling you, it's amazing how often women are going to want to ask you for your time. But that can't happen if you're trying to be the one to go in and ask her for hers all the time first, all right? Another way to move things slower than her, uh, do surprising gestures occasionally, but not all the time. So guys mixed up where they like, in the dating process, you're thinking, okay, date one, I'm gonna get her flowers. Date two, I'm gonna buy her this, that, blah, 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 blah. And it becomes very monotonous. And we don't want you doing actions that are monotonous because women will start to take them for granted. So I don't recommend in the first two months of dating, getting a woman a gift of any kind, really, you know? Um, but what I'll do, I'll, I'll do this though, at the point where 
it looks like we're about to be close to a relationship. I might think back on something she said, like, hey, uh, you mentioned on date one that you like these kind of trinkets. And so I just happened to see this trinket and I got it for you. Here you go. And then you leave it alone and don't give anything for like another two or three months or until you become the boyfriend. Like when you space it out, those moments are going to be so much more meaningful to her because she'll also because she'll know that she earned those moments. Like you getting her some flowers and candy on date one. Well, you didn't know her that much. She did nothing to earn those things. And women actually want to be able to earn her way into a, in their ways into a relationships. So at the point where you're giving her gifts, you, you can give her a gift here and there. And again, you do it sporadically. Like don't be the guy that's constantly doing it all the time. Again, they will take it for granted. But if you do it every so often, then she'll have a really big like feelings of like grandeur and gushing and all that other stuff when it's like, oh my God, this guy got me this thing. And then like two months later, oh my God, he got me flowers today versus you're getting flowers every time you see her. And she's like, oh yeah, he got me another thing of flowers. Okay, it's whatever. Like they're not going to appreciate it, you know? The six, let's see where we're at, number eight. Okay, yes. The eighth way to move slower than her in the dating process, all right, is do not initiate text between dates. As I've stressed before, we want her coming to you. And so your job is to only text and call her in terms of initiating those texts and calls when you're asking her for a date. Other than that, you want her to come to you and try to facilitate like banter conversation. Like a lot of guys think I got to do all this banter banter in order for a woman to like me. Dude, you trying to initiate banter banter, it, it's, it gives off the vibe of feminine energy. I'm sorry it is that way. It just is, right? Like even when you become the boyfriend, you should still be doing a three to one, meaning she should be initiating three texts for every one text that you're initiating. But part of it's because, again, her coming to you and looking for your approval is female energy. You going to her to seek approval is still female energy and coming from you, it's going to turn women off. So when you don't initiate text, you give her the space to come to you when she's ready to have more conversation. And that's what you want ultimately, all right? And again, I stress, it's initiating. When she texts you, initiates text, you can text her back. You're gonna still initiate when it's time to ask her on dates. And like I said, at some point, women might say, hey, so I noticed you really text a lot, blah, 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 blah. You can say, hey, you know what, babe? I like to make sure that I see your face in person and talk to you in person. And I like to make sure that there's no miscommunication because I really, really like what we have going here. And so, I don't really like to text all that much, but that said, you know, if you're reaching out to me, I'll always respond back and I'm definitely going to reach out to you when I want to see you. So that's always a plus, but don't think that if she brings up how much you're not texting, that that means you don't have to, to do the opposite and text her all the time. Because I literally had dated women before where they were, they were like, Hey, so I wish you would text me more. And then I start texting more. And then like a week or two later. So I'm just not feeling because again, women, do not have to know the things that turn them off or turn them on. They're the ones that are, that are reacting to the things we do. So they're not going to necessarily be aware that hearing from you all the time actually turns them off. You have to be aware of that. Continuing, uh, the ninth way to move slower than her. This is a good one, guys. You ready for it? Do not rush into physical intimacy. And this might be hard for you guys, especially those of you that like haven't had any in a long time and you're going out with a girl that seems to really, really like you, I'm not even saying wait four or five months to hook up with her. I'm just saying those first couple of times when it looks like it could possibly happen, try delaying it. Like I I've had it where, I mean, I I've done first date hookups, but I've also done it where I wait till like the third or fourth date. I've also done it where I waited two or three months. And I have found that the longer that I was able to facilitate that we wait for this thing, the better chance there was that when it did happen, it was all systems go. Like there's no rejection. But part of that's because most women aren't used to guys being the ones to turn them down or to be the ones being patient with sex. They're used to guys like, okay, I'm going on a date with this guy and I already know he's going to want to hook up with me before the date's over with. And I used to tell girls, there'll be times where I would date girls and they'd be like, hey, so just so you know, it's the second date, but like, I don't see us, you know, going all the way on this particular date because I want to take my time. And my response would always be, I was a virgin until I was 23. If anything, I cannot wait you. I cannot wait you. Matter of fact, if you want to wait like two or three months, we can totally do that too. Now, what's interesting is when I would tell that to women, they're like, I, I can wait longer than you. We can delay it to longer. Their response would be like, oh, oh well, uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to wait that long. Why? Because it's a bluff. Like they're saying that because they're going to see if them expressing that they want to be a bit patient with sex is going to throw you off your game so they can see that you're all just about sex. But if you actually say to them, I mean, that's cool. 
So you want to go like watch a movie or something or do whatever. The, the more nonchalant and indifferent you can be in your reaction, the more they're going to be like, oh, he's, it's not a big deal to him if we don't do it. That's interesting. I, but I, I kind of want to do it now. It, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, look, I don't understand the psychology of all this stuff. All I know is that based on my experience of these things, this is the stuff that works. So if you're not the one that's facilitating or, or, or trying to rush into physical intimacy, then they're going to be the ones that are jumping your bones. And I've literally done it where it's like, you know, that first date, I don't expect nothing on the first date. If it happens, fantastic. But that second date, most women in their head think, okay, the second date, more likely what's going to happen is there's going to be a first kiss. And then this guy is going to probably want to go from the first kiss to a hookup. So when you're going for that first kiss and then you say, well, I had a good time. Good night. Now she's going to be like, oh, okay, great. Wow. But that kiss was dynamic. Oh my God. I wish I kind of wish we had done more. Like, hmm. I wonder if I can, we can possibly do more next time. And then fast forward to next time and you go to, they invite you up to their house and you're just kind of palling around talking to them. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're making out and then she's reaching for your parts. And you're like, oh, it's go time. But that's because you were patient, which made her realize that you're going to respect whatever decision she has. And her feeling like you respect her regardless of if she hooks up with you or not will make her want to hook up with you. But that's only if you're moving slower than her in that realm, okay? Uh, another Number 10, the 10th way to move slower than her is do not initiate conversations about your feelings. Too many men have bought into the lie that women have to know exactly how you feel. In fact, I'm a fan of The Bachelorette and The Bachelor Show. I just finished watching The Bachelorette. And that show was all about, well, I got to have conversations to her about where I'm at in my feelings and, and how I feel and that I'm falling in love and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, for TV, it looks great. But guys, in real life, you try to have this conversation with her. So I just want to know, I want to express to you how I feel and I love you and feelings and blah, blah, blah. One, that's the woman's job. That is feminine energy. You do not do it. But also to the point is that initiating comments about your feelings does not make her express feelings to you. And all that matters in this process is where her feelings are at, because we know your feelings are already there. So you expressing them is like me uh, saying, I want the letters R, S, T, L, N, and E on Wheel of Fortune. Like those letters are always guessed. We know it's gonna happen. We get it. You're a guy, you're horny, you're feeling things. You already have feelings for her. It ain't gotta be expressed because your feelings do not matter. Like you're, where you're at in your feelings doesn't matter nearly as much as hers because she has to dive through more hoops in the realm of emotions and feelings to get to where she has a strong enough connection with you to where she feels like dating you is a solidified choice, all right? So in the process of her figuring that out, you giving your feelings out is actually a distraction. You try to say, hey, so I know it's been three dates, but I'm already feeling things. She's gonna be thinking, how did he get there so fast? And if he's saying he feels these things and I don't, then it's now unfair to continue to date him because it's not fair to him that I'm not there yet, all right? So when you peel back, you're gonna find they're gonna come to you and start saying things like, so, so you see anybody else or so, I, you know, I really appreciate this date and I had such a good time and you're such a great guy. And they'll start blabbing out all these things, which will give you the radar to know that she's building feelings. And when you're not saying all these things about your feelings, you're gonna find that she's gonna get more intense with saying her feelings about you every time you go out, which let you know that her interest in you is building at a very good rate, oftentimes faster than it would have had you been expressing feelings. Anyway, uh, the 11th thing to do to move slower than her. Ooh, this is the big one. Keep yourself on the dating apps until you have agreed to a relationship with her. So many dudes make the mistake of going on a few good dates and then thinking, you know what? I don't, I don't need to be on these dating apps anymore because I've already made my decision. She's the one I'm focusing on. And therefore, I'm getting off the apps. And she's going to appreciate that. You know what happens? These women go back on the app. I saw, I saw the red, red post today where this woman's like, uh, I was going, I'm going out with a, with a guy for two months and things are going great. But I went on the dating apps just to go through previous matches that I had, and I saw that he changed his picture. Oh, I'm so mad. But she's not mad. What happened, because think about it. She went back on the dating app, why? She, to, 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 a, to check on him, but also because she wanted to go through those other matches to possibly see if maybe any of them she also felt a connection with still, all right? So I say this because while you're thinking, I'm off the dating apps, she's going back on the dating app, and she's looking through her messages, 
And when you dismantle somebody, typically the messages go away. So she's looking for your guys' messages and she's like, hmm, they're not here. Oh, crap. He got off the dating app. <gasps> but it's only been three dates. <gasps> Has he already chosen me? <gasps> How do I feel about that? And the way she feels is that you're rushing your feelings. So I recommend that you stay on the dating apps until she comes to you. Hey, so are you still in the dating apps? Well, you know, I deleted my dating app. And so are we going to be seeing each other exclusively? That's what you want to happen. You actually want her to see that you're still on dating apps. I mean, you don't want to like show it to her directly, but if she happens to go on her dating app and sees you're still there, that you've changed pictures, all that does is put herself in competition with other people that you could or could not be dating. All right. So do not delete yourself from dating apps. I know you want to be a loyal guy, an honest guy. You don't want her to get hurt in any way. And so you thinking if she even knows that I'm still in these dating apps, it's going to hurt her feelings. That's how a guy would logically think about things. You got to understand. Women work on emotion. If she sees you on a dating app, she's going to be thinking, oh, but he makes me feel all these things. I need to have a talk with him about how, how I feel so he won't do this anymore. Let her be the one to come to you to talk about the whole dating app situation, all right? Another one, number 12. Uh, take your time answering her silly love questions, all right? It's going to be a point in time if... You know, you guys are dating. She's going to be asking things like, so how do you feel about me? Or so are you seeing other people? Or so, you know, do you really feel this connection? And you would think that woman asking that, if you gave answers like, oh, I absolutely love you right now. And I feel the word for you. I'm not seeing anybody else. You would think that she'd want to hear those answers and it'd make her happy, right? But understand, this is, this is an example of like, sometimes women will ask questions that they're not even aware of are trick questions and they don't want the answers that they think they want. So if she says to you, hey, so how do you feel about me? Again, it's like the first month of dating, right? And you're thinking to yourself, well, I think I already have strong, intense feelings for her. So I'll tell her that. Yeah, I have some really strong, intense feelings for you. Well, she's going to hear you say that and feel it three times more than you meant it. You're thinking that based on where you're at in the journey, that you're you're building things and you're feeling intense and you're thinking, but you're not all the way there yet, but you would at least know that you know that they're intense, which for you is a way that you help to further build towards your attraction to her. And all she's hearing is intense equals he already wants me as the girlfriend and I don't feel that way quite yet. And so now I feel weird about that. And so you have to be slow in these answers. You have to know how to answer them so that way it's not going to trigger her wanting to go away. So same question. So how do you feel about me? What do you mean? Well, I mean, like, we've been dating for like a month. Like, how do you feel? Where are your feelings at? Oh, I think it's going pretty good. Like, um, having a good time so far. Now, she's going to be like, okay, he must like me because we're, we're, I'm here. Answering, he's answering the question. I'm here with him right now. So he really likes me. But I don't know what level of like that that is. Exactly. She does not actually want to know the level of like that you have for her in that moment, regardless of if she thinks she wants it or not. Because if anything you express that indicates a level that might be slightly higher than hers is going to feel like you like her way too much more than she likes you, all right? So be mindful of answering these silly love questions and being able to answer them playfully and not be so serious with them and still not putting out all these feelings, which leads to number 13, moving slower than her. You want to delay saying, I love you until she says it. You guys have been in the habit of saying, I love you when you ask her on dates, or I love you when you're trying to ask her to be the girlfriend. And all this does more often than not is scare women away because love is a very intense thing to feel, but it's also an emotion that for women feels like it needs to be earned over time. This is why women will take their precious time saying, I love you, because they want to make sure all the boxes are checked, all the T's and are, are crossed, all the I's are dotted because she knows at the point where she says and feels, I love you, there is no coming back from that. At that point, that is a point where if you get rid of her and dump her, she's going to be devastated. So she takes her time because she wants to get to a point where she's pretty much assured that not only does she like you, but you like her enough to where this is going to be in it for the long haul, at which point she'll say it. That's why you coming in at month two and saying, I love you, feels off to her because she's not there in her journey yet. And again, this goes back to, it's going to be better for you as the guy to do actions that indicate I love you, but waiting for her to do the verbal part of saying I love you before you say it. And then even once you start saying that the I love you a lot to each other, for it's three to one. For every three I love you she gives you, you give her one back. Don't get into the habit of like being a parent where she's like, I love you. And you're like, I love you too. Because women will call you out on that. You only say I love you when I say it back. Ver versus you, like she says, I love you. Say, oh, great, honey, thanks, blah, blah, blah. And then out of the blue one day, okay, honey, I'm going to work. Talk to you later. Oh, 
love you. Oh my God, he said it. She, she wants to anticipate hearing I love you versus it becoming a monotonous thing that ends up meaning nothing, all right? So yeah, be more patient when you're putting out your I love yous, okay? Number 14, way to move slower than her is wait for her to come to ask you about transitioning the relationship. Now, and one of the previous messages I read, that guy was like, it was four months. I couldn't wait anymore. I had to ask her. You always want to wait for her. Women, I know women say this thing of like, they want the guy to come to them to ask them out and blah, 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 blah. That is only partially true because what's going to actually happen to get you into a relationship is she's going to come along and ask you some questions or do some actions that are passively her way of trying to express that she now wants to have the conversation of being in a relationship with you. All right. And most guys don't get to that point because they allow their excitedness about being in a relationship to make them be the ones to ask. And they ask too soon. Like, and you know, to be fair, there will be women coaches on YouTube that will say the opposite of what I'm saying. They'll say, no, you got to wait for the guy to come to you. Bull crap. Because for them, it's all about how they feel. For us, it's very analytical. I'm going on dates, spending money, having a good time. Sex is great. We should be there. So we're already ones that want to do the stuff. But for them, they have to have those thoughts on top of, do I feel safe around him? Do I trust him? Does he make me feel better than any other guy? Could I see a future with him? And if those things aren't there, you could come to her all day being like, I'm ready for a relationship. If she does not feel like she's ready for a relationship, then all you're doing is fighting a losing battle towards her going to dump you. So it's better for you as the guy, regardless of what all these other women coaches are saying, to wait for her to come to you to start signaling things that indicate she's now ready to be in a relationship, okay? When you do that, you're going to find women are going to come to you a lot faster. Like I tell you guys, wait two to three months. I've had women at the month and a half to two month mark be like, so what are we doing? So what's up? Because I waited, because I was patient, because I was only taking them out sporadically on dates here and there, because I wasn't verbalizing feelings, because I wasn't the one texting or calling all the time. They were able to come to me and ask these questions because part of them coming to me is so they can further solidify that I'm interested in them. And that's ultimately what you want. And then the last, the last way to move slower than her, especially for you introverted guys, you'll love this. Keep your alone time. Like so many introverts get into this place where they end up sacrificing their alone time because they think that if they are still wanting their alone time, it's going to turn the woman off. I can tell you assuredly, I've dated so many women that have been thankful that I want my alone time, that I'm not the jealous type that allows them to have their alone time or to continue to hang out with their other friends and family outside of me, all right? But more importantly, the reason you want to keep your alone time, guys, this is key, right? Is because you want to be able to use that as a way to help her convince herself that she's getting more and more into your good graces. I'll, I'll explain, right? So I'm a guy that likes his alone time. But I have found that when I'm with somebody that I truly like and I enjoy their company and they're bringing a lot to my world, the amount of alone time that I actually need goes down significantly. But I don't give up that alone time in the beginning because I understand the mechanics of they need to earn more of my time. And they actually feel like I like them more because over time I'll say things like, you know what? I, I, I'm an introvert and I like my alone time, but I find that just being alone with you, it feels as good as if I'm having alone time. You'd be surprised how many women melt. Oh my God, that feels so great. I'm like, eh, cause they understand that's a big deal. It's under, that, to me, sacrificing my alone time to spend five or 10 extra minutes with them means the world to them. Versus if I'm a guy that's just giving up all my time and then none of the time I give up is ever going to be appreciated because it's like, he's always spending time with me. I don't ever get a break from him. Oh my God. Versus if I keep my alone time, oh, I want to see him right now, but oh, he said he needs his alone time. Oh, I really want to see him. It builds up anticipation. It builds up a desire to see me more. And then at the point that I, I'm no longer having my alone time and I see them again, they really want to make sure that they're able to show how appreciative I am for being around, you know? So those are just a few of the things you can do. But the point is this, is that, like I said, when you move at a slower pace, they're going to be ones that are going to come to you. They're going to actually respect the fact that you're being patient because it's not, it shows that you're not rushing into a relationship, which means you're giving them the time that they need to really think about and consider if they want to be in a relationship with you, what that means and how they feel about that. And you guys that are rushing in, you are truly, truly missing out possibly on women that you could have actually gotten with because you're not being patient, okay? You don't lose points if you're a bit more patient than her, but you do lose points if you're going faster than her, all right? So of the two of you, she can afford to go a little bit faster than you. You cannot afford the same. So learn to be 
slower and more patient in your dating. And I assure you, the results that you're going to get are going to be a lot better. And of course, you'll learn a lot more about that in my new book, Stop Losing Women, which comes out September 1st. So be sure to get it when it comes out. I'll start doing pre-orders next week, but it's coming out next Friday. So you'll get that along with a bunch of other great bonuses when this book drops. All right. Anyway, so now that I got through all that, I'm going to see if there's any comments that were left in the chat box in the course of me doing this. Let's see. So I have a question in the chat from somebody that says, what's your time frame on hooking up with them initially? One month, three months, six months. Some are more affectionate than others. Well, this goes back to, it's not so much about the time frame as it is that you are the one that's in control of when it happens. And I mean, I say it because so many guys are, most guys are honestly trying to rush it very, very fast, all right? But that doesn't show that you're a controlled guy that's really assessing her and your guys' dating situation and if there's chemistry involved. And women want to see that you are taking the same kind of time and you're putting forth the same effort and energy to really look at if you guys have the dynamic as she is. Because most women are going to do their due diligence. Most women, even if they hook up with you on a first date or a third date, they're going, they're, they're really looking at like, but how is this guy pacing out this dating process, all right? And so the mistake most guys make is, let's say, let's say you get that first date hookup, right? Well, most guys will be like, I got the first date hookup, now we're boyfriend or girlfriend. No. You need to be treating all these girls in the first three months the same way you would whether you hooked up with them on date one or on month three. And that is that everything you're doing with this girl is just part of the research process. You hook up with her on the third date, you are not boyfriend or girlfriend. That is just, you guys did an activity that gives you more research into the dating process of her and that felt great. You now know what hooking up with her feels like and you know what things she likes in bed. Fantastic. You add that to the list of things you now know about her, but this does not mean you're in a relationship. And that's the real problem is that it's not about when you hook up with her, it's about what energy are you bringing to the dating situation after you've hooked up with her? If you're a guy that can hook up with a girl on date one and still treat this whole process as if it's just all part of finding out who she is, then go for that. If you're a guy that knows that once you hook up with her, you're not you're going to feel like you're in a relationship, then fine. Wait till month two or three, all right? So that part doesn't matter so much. But I will say I found that typically if you wait a few dates, like say two or three dates for the hookup, it gives her enough time to have spent time with you to not second guess and have buyer's remorse about that decision, but it's still so still early in the process to where it's not super serious. It's just you now know this is going to be part of dating her and your guys' dating process. So hopefully, guy that helps you out. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see another question here. Uh, question says, "What happens if she initiates texting but then continues and continues the conversation nonstop?" Sometimes. I try to end the conversation so we can have some time to miss each other. Is that a good sign or should I continue to try to end the conversation? Well, here's the real reality, guys. And this is, I know I teach you guys a lot about how if you're over texting, it can be annoying to women. But also, if a woman's over texting, it can become annoying to you as well. There are just like there are men that are bad at texting and that want to text nonstop, there are women out there that are going to try to do that. That does not mean that you have to be engaged in that activity. So if you want to stop a conversation, you can just say, you could chill, respond back or something for like the 15th time. And you're like, oh, that's so, that's so great or blah, 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 blah. And you'd be like, hey, I'll, you know, I, I'm, I'm about to do some errands, but I'll catch up with you later. Boom. Leave it at that. Because honestly, people who text a whole lot, they're doing that because there's something in them that says that they don't really quite feel good enough or believe that this other person is going to want to be with them unless they're constantly in front of their face, all right? But that's not a you issue. That's a her issue. That does not mean, again, that you have to do that in order to make her feel good about herself. Now, if you happen to try to cut off a text and say, hey, I'll chat with you later, and she keeps trying to text you, you ain't got to answer it. And at that point, she starts getting belligerent and being like, well, why don't you text me back? It doesn't take that long. Are you cheap? Well, then you now know you have a texting cycle on your hands and you know that you're a person that doesn't have a good enough self-esteem about themselves to think that they can go away from texting you and still be in your good graces. And these are the kind of things that, again, you want to suss these things out early when you don't have a lot of feelings for a person because it's if she's texting you extensively early on and she won't stop doing it and it's bugging you and you realize it's not going to stop, you can get out. Like You don't have to keep seeing her. You can leave her and see somebody else, but it's going to be easier to do that if you notice that early on 
versus you're six months in and now all of a sudden you want to be like, hey, babe, so you text me a lot and I don't like it. Well, unfortunately, she's now had six months of you agreeing to that behavior. And even though it sucks, that's not fair to her that you waited that long to say something about it. So all that to say, you don't have to continue the conversation. You can say, you can do a wrap up. Hey, babe, great to hear from you. Uh, I'll text you later on about a date. I want to take you on later this week. Boom, be done, be out. If she decides to text after that, that's on her. You are not obligated to continue the text stream. Much in the same way I teach you guys, hey, if you're texting a girl nonstop and she doesn't answer back, she has a right to stop for the day. Like the bad thing about texting is it makes a conversation feel as though it could go on 24 hours. And the reality is it should not. So treat texting like you're in an actual conversation and like a party. At some point, you're going to leave the party and not talk to these people again. That is totally fine to do in real life and in your texting life. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, let's see. Anything else in the chat here? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so this guy left in the chat. Uh, and I guess it's a reference into like the whole the whole hookup thing, where I talk about how if you're if you make a woman wait for hooking up, you'll find that they're going to be the ones coming to you, wanting that hookup or doing things that facilitate a hookup. And this guy said, holding out, waiting drives them crazy. Yeah. It does. And most women don't have that happen. Most women, they know they can go on any given time and just be like, I want to hook up. And they can go on a dating app tonight and be like, hey, guy, let's go hook up. Every guy they hit up is going to say, yes, let's do it. Right. So if you're the one guy that she really, really wants and you're like, let's just wait. Yeah. It's going to build up even more anticipation. It's going to have her questioning herself about, is she good enough? Do you find her attractive? All these other things that in your head, you're like, of course, I find you attractive. But the fact that she has that thought, it's going to make her not to prove to herself that she isn't attractive by hooking up with you. Is it is it fair? Who cares? The point is that, that it works. So uh, let's see any other questions. Question in the chat goes, how should introverts think about the fear of rejection when approaching women you find attractive? Um, well, you know what's funny is in my book here, I actually have a whole chapter where I talk extensively about that kind of thing. So definitely tune in when you get the book next week. But I will say this, is that I believe that men think and feel that the women we find attractive feel the same way about themselves all the time. And I found that to not be true. And this is why it's important to know about a woman's mental life, because we put women on such a high pedestal. We think they're so great. They're so wonderful. They smell so great. They look so good. They must also think the same thing about themselves. And that's why they probably wouldn't like me. Right. And in the meantime, in that girl's head, you don't know the thought life women have. I dated some of the hottest women that in being in, in quiet moments with them are like, well, you know, I don't think my boobs are big enough or they're too big. Or, you know, I, I like this mole on my face here, or I have smelly farts or blah, blah, blah. This is that. And they have all these things that they know are imperfect about themselves that we're not even seeing or thinking about, right? But if you know and are aware that women have these thoughts going on in their head, it'll make it easier for you to approach them because you won't think that they're such the hot stuff because you'll be thinking, even though I think they're the hot stuff, they probably don't think they're the hot stuff, which means they're looking at themselves as being on an, evil, on an even playing field with you. And you know what? You are, because the reality is you're going to find as you date more and more women, when you get them home on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't look that great. They don't smell that great. They do annoying things. They make mistakes. They, you know, have their hair all unkempt and out of place, or they're leaving messes around in your, in your place. And they're going to start to do things that are going to bring them down to earth. If you just have the idea of the woman in front of you as already being that person, it makes it very easy to go in with a, with a thought of like, let me go and research what this person's about before I have all these feelings for them versus thinking, oh my God, they're already so great. I just know they're the worst, best person ever and you'll be less nervous. At least that's what worked for me, you know? Um, all right. So I will answer a couple more questions that I, a couple more comments that I got this past week and then we'll call it a day. So let's see if I got anything else here. This guy. So I did a video called She Has a High Body Count. Here's what to do when you find out. And I talked about how like, you know, if you're if you're dating a woman and you find out in the course of dating her that she has a high body count, you got to see what she's like in the moment and how she's been with you. And if she's trying to like chase tail with other guys versus not. But if you find out early, you might want to question, you know, if you want to be with her or not. So this guy said, I personally love women with high body counts. They're fun in bed and have lower expectations. So they're easier to deal with. The problem is when guys see them as more than for recreational use. 
You and her need to understand this and never let that change. She must remain in her place and you must never commit to her, period. Well, I don't fundamentally agree with that for a variety of reasons. One of them being that I have found that there are women that have been with less bodies that will still be highly engaged and willing to do almost anything you want. Because it really does boil down to the level of interest that she has in you and also how open she is to the sexual experience. You could have a woman that has hundreds of bodies, but she's always lying there like a dead fish. So just because she has all these bodies behind her doesn't mean that she's like experienced in the variety of sexual things you want to do. It doesn't mean that she's willing to do all the things in bed you want to, because I've definitely dated women that had high bodies that didn't want to do certain things that I liked in bed. And I'm like, but you've done all this stuff. But well, no, she was with a lot of people. That doesn't mean she did a lot of stuff, you know? So I, I stress it because, again, I don't want there to be a, a, a myth out there that women that have high bodies are better in bed or that they do more stuff. I can assure you that is not true, all right? Um, but more importantly, this idea of like, a woman that's had a high amount of bodies can never be you can never can only be used for recreational purposes and should, could never be in a, in a serious relationship. Well, the reality is I don't believe that, and you don't know why the woman has high bodies. Like, yeah, there are some women out there they want to go to pound town just because maybe they have an extra level of testosterone in their bodies and they want to hump like a dude does, you know. But there are some women that like they might have had trauma as a kid that resulted in them trying to find love by way of bodies, and then they go to therapy. They realize that's not the way to do that, and they stop doing that. But they racked up like. 100 bodies, you know? Well, let's say the woman's like 30 years old. She's racked up 100 bodies. And, then, and again, she went to therapy. She had trauma in her past. She got over it. And now she's 35. She's gone five years without hooking up with anybody. And she meets you. Are you going to really judge her on the 100 bodies she had prior to when she was 30 versus like the years where she actually showed self-control? Because I'd rather date that kind of person than a person who's 35 and has no control and is still just hooking up with whoever, whatever, you know? So... There's more factors than just how many bodies a person had to determine if they're going to be a good mate for you or not. I'm just saying, whatever your judgment is of that, because some guys are like, hey, if she had 10 bodies, she's out. You can have your own judgment call. I just stress that that's not the best way to go about dating. And you could actually miss out on somebody that's really great because of whatever body count they have. All right. Yes, body count can be a, a way to determine the likelihood of how she's going to be with you, but really look at all the other factors that are in play before you have that be the main thing that's making your decision. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's see. And I think I'll do this last one here. So this person said, this person commented under three reasons she'll gladly risk losing with the pull away test. And this guy says, uh, my story goes like this. We matched on a dating app and chatted for a few days, less than a week. Then suddenly she went silent. I only texted her twice after she stopped responding. Initially, I thought she might have been busy, so I left, let her be and didn't send any more messages, even though she hadn't replied. A few days went by with no text from her, and I confirmed that she hadn't blocked me. I decided to send another short text. I asked her how she was doing, if everything was okay, and expressed my concern since it had been a few days. I told her to text me back when she had the time. Weeks passed and still no text from her. I assumed she wasn't interested, had perhaps found someone else, rec reconciled with an ex, or maybe even she was uh, some sort of love scammer. There are many possibilities, and I want to emphasize that our conversations were mostly about our daily activities and some random topics. We never discussed anything sensitive that could have caused either of us to stop communicating. It remains a mystery to me why she ghosted me. Okay, so this is where we get into the conversation I've had before, which is as a guy, it's very important to be indifferent to the dating process and not let various things bug you or hurt your feelings. Because let's take this example, right? They talk, talk for a few days and then she's gone. So why is she gone? We don't know. It could have been a bot, meaning it's not a real person. She could have found somebody else in the app that she was more interested in. She could have gotten back with an ex-boyfriend. She could have died. I've heard plenty of stories of like, I was texting this person and then they stopped answering and I was mad. And then a few weeks later, I found out that she actually died. I actually uh, emailed a girl one time that I've been dating and she didn't respond back to me, found out she got hit by a car. Like that kind of stuff just happens, right? But the point is whether it was something tragic that happened or she just lost interest or she found somebody else. The point is this, is that you being indifferent to the outcomes of what you're getting in dating is always going to be the best mode of operandi because one, you can't do research into every single girl that rejected you ever and why. And also I found just in, in the process of my dating life, that so many 
situations could happen to whereby she didn't respond back to you, that ultimately it boils down to the only thing that matters is you didn't get a response and it's time for you to move on. I've had girls that I was crushing on that stopped texting me, found out years later, they were gay or lesbian. I've, I've had girls that I was texting and they stopped. Turns out they got back with the baby daddy. I've had girls that I stopped texting. Turns out they were so nervous about the dating process that they just got nervous meeting me and they, they, they weren't quite ready for it. And they just put off dating for a few more years. Like you, all that matters is if you're not getting a response back, it is what it is. Hey, not everybody's out there to like you. You're not gonna know every single situation. All you can do is know that if you're not getting the reaction or response that you want, you move on to somebody else. And the faster you're able to get that concept, the easier it's going to be to date because you'll be dating some girl or talking to some girl. Things are going great. And then you'll send like two or three texts and she don't respond back. And you won't wait weeks on end to hear from her. You'll just be like, okay, well, I guess I'll be talking to somebody else. And ideally, this is also why in the beginning of dating, you're dating like two, three, four different people because if one goes away, you won't even care. You'll barely notice it because, oh, well, this one went away. I got four other people I'm dating still. So really try to learn to be indifferent to the dating process and whether or not women are messaging you back or not. And A, you'll get better responses. And also you'll feel more empowered to be able to go out there and date the kind of women you want and to be able to have a, a more than enough women to know that if this one doesn't work out, you'll find somebody else. So hopefully, guy, it helps you out. All right. So that is pretty much all I got for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So I was originally doing these shows starting at 3.30. I'm going to be doing these shows every Tuesday at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time because more of you guys are able to watch this show, all right? So tune in next week. Uh, I'll be talking probably extensively about the book that's coming out as well as answering more of your guys' questions. During the course of this week, if you're watching my other videos and you have questions you want answered on the show, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them on next week's show, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Harry Wilmington, and I will catch you guys on the next show. Be sure to go to the website for my eBooks, audiobooks, programs, and music albums, all designed to help you learn how to date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. And in terms of the music stuff, also, uh, I, I make great music, and it sounds great when you listen to it. So that's all I got. I'm Harry Wilmington. I'll catch you guys next week. I'm out. Peace. Call this beat Will Smith, because it slaps hard. Hear it not when I pull up. Chain blinging, but I got money, you can tell by all